Hi guys, welcome back to Natural and Glamorous. If you are new around here, my name is Jamie and I share natural wellness and lifestyle videos. It has been a while since I've done a video. I took a little bit of a break, but I wanted to jump back in here and share my story about how I became a natural mama. So today's video is all about my journey to becoming a natural mama. Believe it or not, it wasn't something that happened all at once. My process was slow. So let's go back 10 years to when I was pregnant with my son, Teddy, and I had a really strong instinct to protect the little baby in my belly, as all of us mamas do. Unfortunately, I didn't have access to a natural community. My process to becoming a natural mama was very slow. Literally, step by step, lesson by lesson, I gradually moved to the lifestyle that felt right and felt good for me. So today's video, I'm going to be sharing specifically my birth story with Teddy. For me, I slowly made a birth plan once I was pregnant with Teddy and none of that happened, and it was very disappointing, but it catapulted me into researching and being my own advocate, and it took me to where I am as the empowered mom, making educated, um, really feel-good choices that I know are right for my family. And that's what I hope for all of you guys watching this video, is that my story maybe connects with you a little bit, but also helps you to see that you can be the mom that feels right to you and make decisions that feel right to you and you can feel empowered. This is simply my story of my birth with Teddy and it did not go as I had planned to and there are a few reasons why it didn't and I'm hoping that sharing this story helps somebody else get the birth that they really have in their heart. So let's go back to 2009 when I was pregnant with Teddy. I found out I was pregnant and I immediately did the thing that most moms do. Right away I called my OBGYN and I bought the book What to Expect When You're Expecting. So I started digging away because I'm the type of person that needs to know everything about what's in my life. And I started reading that book and then I did something that might be a little bit unconventional. I actually purchased the book, The Complete Organic Pregnancy. So this book really opened my eyes to the chemicals that we are using in our daily lives. Everything from the nail polish on our nails, to the beds that we sleep in, to even the water that we drink. And I became super aware of everything in my home. That book really propelled me to make a lot of lifestyle changes to the products that I was bringing in, and the water that we were drinking, and even when I made decisions about the clothes and the crib and the furniture that we were purchasing for our new baby, I kept all of those things that I learned about chemicals in mind. So there was only one small chapter on the actual birthing process that described a number of natural ways to give birth. It was basically a couple of natural options that you might want to talk to your doctor about, including um, a water birth, an unmedicated birth, um, and birthing in natural light as opposed to fluorescent lighting. All of those things naturally appeared to me, appealed to me. Of course, I was reading the complete organic pregnancy and 100% on board with all of her chemical awareness tips and getting the chemicals out of my home and bringing our little baby into a safe place. So when I read about the natural birth process, everything that was naturally or minded appealed to me and I wrote them in my birth plan and I gave them to my OBGYN. So this is the first place that I went wrong in being able to obtain the birth that I wanted was I didn't take it any further than knowing what I wanted and giving it to my OBGYN in a birth plan. I didn't have access, like I said, to a natural community. I didn't read any stories of a successful natural birth. I wasn't surrounding myself with people who have done it and who had been through it. The only thing that I had in my mind was that my mother had given birth to three babies unmedicated vaginally. And I knew that it was possible for me if she did it. A 
Unfortunately, I really needed a lot more statistics and facts when it came to giving birth naturally. And I needed a lot more support in terms of listening to stories and hearing success successful natural births. Because when it came time to deliver the baby at 39 weeks, my OGBYN said that if I came in the following week, at the end of the pregnancy, you go in once a week to see your OBGYN. So if I came in at week 40 and still had no signs of labor, then I would have to be induced. And of course, that wasn't part of my birth plan. I want it unmedicated. I wanted it to be natural. I was not, I had no knowledge of how to do things so that I could best have that success. But I just hoped that I would go into labor before I saw her at 40 weeks. So I wanna just stop this story right now and give you guys a few facts. So the first one that I did not know at the time was most women go 38 to 42 weeks pregnant. So scheduling an induction at 40 weeks was completely unnecessary. Had I known this information at the time, I definitely wouldn't have agreed to it. And my OBGYN made it very clear that it was my decision, but she also made it very clear that I didn't get to make the decision, that this is what you do at 40 weeks. So as a new mom who was completely unarmed with actual evidence-based information, I agreed to be induced. So I went into the hospital and I was given Pitocin at 40 weeks, two days. And for those of you who don't know what Pitocin is, Pitocin is a medicine that is given to pregnant women to induce contractions and to induce labor. Unfortunately, they are synthetic contractions, they're fake contractions, and they, are, they last longer and they are stronger than actual real labor contractions. So they're completely fake and artificial and your body does not know what to do with them. A lot of babies do not do well with Pitocin contractions. So I went 24 hours with Pitocin contractions and I did not, um, I was not medicated. I did not do an epidural or anything. So it was completely natural, exactly how I want it. Unfortunately, after about 24 hours, my water broke. <laughs> and I started having real contractions. So these real contractions on top of the Pitocin contractions, which were still happening, were so strong for my body that my baby's heart rate started to drop. Now, what I did not know is that this is the experience of so many women giving birth in hospitals. And that's because doctors basically are trained surgeons. They are trained in interventions. So it is completely natural, sadly, to hear this story from women where they go in, they're induced, they get Pitocin, their baby's heart rate drops, and they need an emergency C-section. So we end it with an emergency C-section, and I have nothing against C-sections as long as they are just and called for, and mine was completely uncalled for. There was no need for an inducement, there was no need for Pitocin, and the Pitocin was 100% the reason why we end it with an emergency C-section. Now here is my experience in the hospital with a C-section. The, um, the hospital bed that I was on, my arms were strapped to the bed. In case you start to feel something and you start to freak out while they're cutting your belly open to take out your baby, but I was strapped down, so after they cut my stomach open and took Teddy out, they actually brought him screaming over to the scale. And they weighed him, and they measured him, and they fingerprinted him. And about a month after I had him, I looked back at the video that my husband at the time was taking of the birth process. And it broke my heart because Teddy is screaming, hysterically crying while they're weighing him and measuring him and doing all these kind of formalities for a baby before he even got to see his mom. Then they finally brought him over to me and I wasn't able to hold him. The nurse held him and put him on my chest and I was able to use my finger and kind of soothe him with, like, with my finger on his cheek. And I have a picture of that. Um, and it's actually one of my happy memories of my C-section because I got to be with Teddy. 
But unfortunately, that was short-lived. It lasted for maybe a minute. And they quickly took him away into a separate room because that hospital's policy was that the mom and the baby be separated while the mom recovers from surgery. So hours later, I was brought into my room and I did send my husband at the time to make sure that he was okay, to stay with him and to not leave his side. And that did happen. But hours later, I was brought into my room and my baby was not there. So I asked the nurses to bring me my baby and they said, okay. And 10 minutes later, it had not happened. And I clearly remember asking them at least three times to bring me my baby to the point where I remember a nurse laughing at me and saying, oh, you've been asking for your baby. Let me go get him. So hours after I had Teddy, they brought him to me. And the reason why this is so traumatic for me was not only because I wanted that experience of holding my baby and having him feel that safety and comfort of the mom that was carrying him for nine months, the, the most familiar face and sense that he had, but also because I really wanted to breastfeed. And those of you who know about breastfeeding, your best chances of breastfeeding are right after the baby is born and teaching them to latch or getting them to latch. When that happens right away, you have such a better success rate. On top of the fact that I was um, under, I had the epidural when I, when I, when they told me I had to have an emergency C-section, I at that time had to have the epidural. So I was drugged and and the baby was drugged because that does pass through the placenta, the epidural. And that makes it even harder to breastfeed because the mom and the baby are both out of it at that time. It's very hard to get a baby to nurse when they are under that kind of medication. So this, this had been hours. We were both under the medication. And I was really nervous about breastfeeding right away. But I finally did get Teddy and I tried to nurse him and... Of course, we had a really hard time nursing. I couldn't get him to latch. Um, I didn't know how to do it. This was my first time. I was a first time mom. I didn't know like what to do. So I asked for the lactation consultant in the hospital, which thankfully I was smart enough to ask for that. So th luckily I did ask for the lactation consultant and just like asking for my baby, it took this actually took hours. It took hours for the lactation consultant to come down. And when they finally came down, it was it took them three seconds to show me how to get the baby to latch. He latched and nursed right away. But in that time, I had so many nurses tell me that I should probably just supplement in the meantime, that the baby was really hungry, that it wasn't good for him to not have any food, that um, breastfeeding might not work out for me. And... Luckily, I was persistent enough to wait for that lactation consultant. She showed me how to do it within a matter of minutes, and we had no issues in the hospital breastfeeding. So that is my birth story. And what I will say is that if you are looking for a hospital birth, if you are okay with interventions, you should know that hospitals have about a 30% C-section rate because they are trained in interventions, because they look to intervene at any time to speed up your labor process. And if you're okay with that, that is great. But if you're looking for more of a natural approach, if you're looking to listen to your body, to let your body do its thing, you need a community around you that understands that. So you can get a midwife to come to the hospital with you, or you can birth in a birth center with a midwife if you're low risk, or you can birth um, at home with a midwife. A midwife is trained to let your body do its thing, to help the mom during her labor process. The other thing that you can do is you can get a doula. A doula is somebody that you hire that specifically gives you the support that you need to carry through your birth plan. My last tip for you if you're wanting a natural pregnancy is to really surround yourself with information and resources and evidence-based information and resources that show you how possible this is, how common it is to have a natural vaginal birth. Unfortunately, I did not get the birth that I wanted with Teddy. It was very traumatic. It was an emergency C-section. I was hooked up to 
Pitocin and I was given an epidural and in the hospital, it's just very traumatizing to be in a hospital to begin with. There's fluorescent lights, there's beeping all the time. It's just not the experience that I wanted for Teddy. Now I know that my experience in the hospital and having so many interventions and ending with an emergency procedure is not the experience of every mom that gives birth in the hospital. I would love to hear what your experiences were in the comments. If you could tell me if you had an amazing birth, if you had um, a disappointing birth, if you were in the hospital, if you were in a birth center, if you were at home with your baby the entire time, I would love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are into natural wellness and natural lifestyle, especially if you're a mom. I'm gonna be sharing more of my process on how I became a natural mama because like I said, it did not happen overnight. It did not happen all at once. It was literally lessons after lessons that taught me that I needed to go in a different direction to feel good about the choices that I was making and to be the mama that I knew that I wanted to be. And the birth experience that I had was only one of them. So I hope to see you guys next time and I will continue my story on how I became a natural mama.